When you see these things begin to happen, look up. And we know from, from Scripture, specifically Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, I say these, rattle these things off, all they are is the names of the people who wrote them in chapter headings. So when I say Matthew 24, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, Matthew's the guy that wrote it, and you turn to chapter 24, and bam, you can find it for yourself. So that's a little bit of shorthand when I, when I throw out those Scripture verses. That can be annoying to people who don't know what I'm talking about. But look, the bottom line is this. Yeshua, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, tells us, um, when you see these things begin to happen, look up, because your redemption is coming, your rescue is coming, hope is on the way. And he points to these certain signs, and he asks us, when you see wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, and troublesome times, know that these are the beginnings of the birth pangs, as he calls them. Now, what's interesting, interesting to note here, that when he wrote that 2,000 years ago, or when his disciples wrote those words down, attributed to Yeshua, Jesus, uh, what's interesting is there's no way to track any of that before the modern era. In other words, if an earthquake of 9.0 happened in Fukushima, Japan, 300 years ago, and you lived in England, you would never know about it, more than likely, unless a seafarer or a trading vessel happened to be there maybe a month or two after that, saw that, wrote it down on a piece of parchment, sailed all the way back to England, and then took that parchment and gave it to uh, officials, and, and information was disseminated word of mouth, one at a time. Well, in the modern era, we experience everything pretty much at the speed of live. What I mean by that, as an event is happening on the other side of the globe, we are seeing it in live right now, right as it's happening. We're watching it happen. A good example of that would be the Chilean miners uh, being rescued uh, from the mine. And the entire globe watched that because we're all linked up together with fiber optics, satellite television. So we are now in an era where we can track the earthquakes. In other words, what, is, what Yeshua, Jesus, calls the birth pangs, we are now in an era where we can track these things. So when an earthquake happens, like in Fukushima, we know about it. We watch that tidal wave come in, at the, in, 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 in real time, which is unprecedented. So that's a little bit about, um, it's sort of a primer gets things set up when you see these things. And I discuss the famines, the pestilence, the earthquakes in diverse places, and really stress the importance of knowing prophecy and understanding that the prophetic word in Scripture is there that separates. In fact, I, I ask this question when I'm out lecturing in, in places. What separates the guidebook of the supernatural, i.e. the Bible, from any other book on the planet? And I'll often get answers like, Jesus, that's not the answer. You know, miracles, no, that's not the answer. There's one element, the one dynamic that separates what we believe from anybody else on this planet, and that is the thread of prophecy from Genesis to Revelation. No other book. No other book has this, this thread that goes back thousands of years and yet is continuing now. We see prophecies being fulfilled in our lifetime. No other tome on this planet has that prophetic thread with 100% accuracy, 100% of the time. And that's what separates, what differentiates our book from any other book. I'm the messenger. I've been doing this for basically ever since I became a Christian, which is 30 years but I've been doing it full-time for about almost three now. Full-time, it's all I do. Go to my blog, I blog daily. Even here without the laptop, I'm going down to the hotel's laptop and throwing off a blog and that type of stuff. I blog about prophecy, politics, and the supernatural, about things that are relevant, not about Paris Hilton or Lindsay Lohan or O.J. Stint in jail. If you go to the blog, lamarzuli.wordpress.com, there's about three to 4,000 people a day that travel there. We get hundreds of comments sometimes on different articles. Articles are picked up by other websites. So I believe it's really relevant. Sometimes it's even cutting edge because I, th I view everything through the lens of scripture. Everything, my worldview is through the, wor through the lens of biblical scripture, everything. My whole life is involved in, in him, in talking about him. In order to get to Saturday, which will be pretty intense because we're going to talk about cattle mutilations and UFOs and signs in the sky and human mutilations and crop circles and human hybrids and alien implants and everything that should be in the X-Files <laughs> and belongs there, but for some reason is manifesting on the planet. I can't get you there until I start here. Because if I open up with that, I'll lose a lot of people. And one thing which I will bring you back to constantly, golly, those lights are bright, Sam. One thing I will bring you back to constantly through this, oh, thank you, oh, the ambiance, yes. 
Glass of Merlot, please. No, just kidding. I would never have a glass of Merlot. <clears throat> so let me get, let me get a slurp of, of agua here. That's nicer. Thank you, Sam. One thing I'll bring you back to constantly, because when I'm looking here, I can see you all pretty much at a glance. And sometimes when we talk about stuff, I'll get this. And I know, oops, somebody, and I'll immediately say, we've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Everything we're going to look at in the next three days, that's our, that's our starting point. That's got to be in our gut, in our heart, in our mind. We've got to walk in that. We've got to put on the armor of God. We've got to realize that our weapons are not fleshly. They're not carnal, but they're supernatural. We have to put that on. No, no, no. Fear comes in. No, no. I, I, don't, I don't have that. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And I'm going to walk in that. And so that's an admonition to all of you as we get it. Because we're going to, this stuff is, look, when I get into this stuff, you think I just opened all this and, and got here? It's taken years. And some of it was like, Lord, I can't do this anymore. Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. Lord, find somebody else, please, to do this. Because it's dark and some of it's ominous. Because it's like David, when David went into the camp of Saul. It's just like that. It's going into the camp of the enemy. I consider myself, people come up and go, L.A., are you a prophet? No, I am definitely not a prophet. Do I believe in the gift of prophecy? Absolutely. I'm a watcher, a watchman. I watch. And sometimes a watchman will hop on a, a horse and ride, you know, a couple of days out to make sure there's nothing coming into the city. That's what I do. I write a couple of days out sometimes and I check out and see what's going on. I have never seen, I haven't even started this thing and here we are, we're so many rabbit trails. Miss a rabbit trail king, but we'll get there, I promise you. Um, sometimes there's so much going on on, in, on the planet and I have never seen it this tenuous, this charge. I've never seen the global atmosphere, this charge, this uncertain, this tenuous the fear, the uncertainty, that's all over the globe. I mean, it's not only here. Look at the riots today. Look at the riots in France. Look at the riots in Greece. The uncertainty of the stock market, the economic stuff. You see, it's coming. This thing has been orchestrated. I'm way ahead of myself, but who cares? I'm just going to flow with it. It's like the mystery of iniquity. We're told in 2 Thessalonians that the mystery of iniquity is working. That's 2,000 years ago. What do you think he's been working for? You know, the little puppet show at the end? No. It's the coming great deception. So if I don't start this, we'll never get out of here. And I got to do it. I got to stick at least somewhat to, to the script. Not that it's a script because it's different every time. And this is the primer. Because if I lay this foundation down to you and you get this, then we can begin to move on and talk about. This is sort of like the milk and the meat thing. This is like the hors d'oeuvre to where we're headed. This, these are the hors d'oeuvres. And we need to get this down. But what's the mantra? He's talking Hinduism now. No, just joking. What, what's our battle cry? We've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Love, power, and a sound mind. You see this? I'll talk about this later. Messengers of deception. Hopefully, we'll get to that PowerPoint tonight. But in Messengers of Deception, which I don't really get into um, so much Hinduism, but you'll see a whole bunch of pictures of gurus and stuff. You see, I just said mantra, and no one said anything. Go back 30 or 40 years, and if I had said mantra, you would have looked at me, maybe two or three people in the audience 40 years ago would have gone, I wonder what he's talking about. Now, no one bats an eye. We've been enculturated. With what? With messengers of deception, which is the PowerPoint I'm going to get to, hopefully, after the primer, which we haven't started yet. Pray for me. So the bottom line is I said mantra, no one, no one flinched. You all know what a mantra is. Mantra, mantra. Well, it's Hinduism. And it crept in here at, in the late 60s, early 70s. And you'll see when we get into messengers of deception how sometimes you think your kids are Christians. They're off, you know, listening to gurus and all this other stuff. But I digress. We are told in Scripture an amazing, amazing pro uh, promise by Yeshua. Oh, two things. I will refer to the Bible mostly as the guidebook to the supernatural. He's changing the name of the Bible. We should leave now. Bible just means book. And what I really think it is is a guidebook to the supernatural. With all my heart, I believe in that. It tells us how to engage, how not to engage, how to put on the armor, what to do, what to say, what not to say, what to avoid, what to embrace. It just tells us everything. And it's alive 
The word is alive. Sometimes I'll go back, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, and read something I've read, I don't know, 50 times before, and all of a sudden, boing, it becomes alive, and it just cuts me to the quick. Wow, Lord, thank you. That's amazing. So I will refer to the Bible the whole time as the, not the whole time, but a lot of the time, as the guidebook to the supernatural. When I'm on Coast to Coast, I've been on nine times, but who's counting? When I'm on Coast to Coast with George Norrie, I always say the guidebook to the supernatural. And then the day after, my wife and I are in hysterics because we get all these emails from, from people, dear LA, I, I've been Googling guidebook of the supernatural and I can't find it anywhere. What is it? Where can I buy this book? Because they want it. And then I write back and go, well, you might not you know, accept this, but the guidebook of the supernatural is actually the Bible. Most of the time we never hear from them again. But because, see, people have this idea because of the nonsense that the church, and I say this with all due respect and a weeping, grieving heart, has become in 2,000 years. It's not pageantry and televangelists and $1,000 offerings to get your Cadillac and pay your mortgage and all this stuff. It's the experience of being born again and spirit-filled that changed everything. And that has been obfuscated. That has been so hidden that most people have no idea even what it is. And that's a travesty. The very organizations which are supposed to be promulgating the experience, no, no, we can't have that. Don't want to be born again here. We have our, our program. Look, I've got to tell you something. If the Lord wanted to do something and I, I would completely abdicate all of my time instantaneously. And I mean that. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. If I felt in my spirit, if the Lord said, you need to, I would immediately abdicate it. Because that's what being spirit-filled and born again is about is to wait. Look, I'm not perfect, just like you. I, don't, I hear it sometimes, and I don't mind the checks, and I go off, and then I have to get pulled back, just like all of us. We're not perfect. But boy, I love when he checks me. Okay, let's begin. When, uh, <laughs> what global... Now, some, you got to promise me something. The smart Alex that are in the room that went to the other conference might know this. Okay, so if you, if you, if you know the answer because you were in another conference, you're not allowed to say anything. Okay, and all these seats, by the way, are wired, and I've got the numbers here with electric things, so I can, I'm just joking. Okay, what global life-changing event are you looking forward to, anyone? What global life-changing event are, should we be looking forward to? What global, is this not a trick question? Anyone can answer. Oh, you're awfully shy. I don't know what he's, what is that? Who said that? Give that man a free book. I mean it. Give him any, any book on the table, my friend, is yours. Sweet. What if it was a trick question? Okay. How many people are really looking for that? How many of us are really in tune with that? How many people think it's just business as usual? How many think that these are all idle words? How many of us walk where Peter walks and it's just, where's the promise of his coming? Ah, we've heard that nonsense before, Right? How many of us walk in there? Don't talk about the second coming. It scares people, L.A. 